we finally have one. The Galaxy Z Flip 6 is in the house. But before we go and review it, because we need to spend a bit of time with it, let's actually compare it to the Z Flip 5 from last year. Because there is some significant upgrades, even if it doesn't look like there are. So let's go through them. Here it is, the Z Flip 5 against the Z Flip 6. We're gonna be comparing both of these across a lot of different categories to see where the upgrades lie and if now that they're on sale, you should upgrade to this over this. On the surface, especially looking at the hardware, not a lot appears to have changed. Samsung have basically just subtly refined the design and instead of the subtle rounded edges on the frame, it's completely flat sides and rails. Of course, there's new materials that are encasing all of this. And yeah, that's that's cool. It's not a reason to go from the Flip 5 to the Flip 6. Another thing worth testing out is the speakers. Samsung did change the design of the speakers. It's got these on the Flip 5, you've got the little individual grooves, but on the Flip 6, like this 24 series, it's just got one open slot. Have a listen for yourselves and see which one sounds louder. The Galaxy Z Flip 6 looks awfully similar to the Galaxy Z Flip 5, but leaving it there wouldn't be doing it justice. The Galaxy Z Flip 6 looks awfully similar to the Galaxy Z Flip 5, but leaving it there wouldn't be doing it justice. When you hold the two phones actually next to each other, you'll notice that the Flip 6 is a fraction thicker, and there's reasons for that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Before I get to that though, I want to cover off the hinge. Samsung every year likes to redesign the hinge and to tighten up the areas where they potentially in the past become loose and aren't quite as strong and sturdy. The Flip 6 is a great example of that. Using the two hinges next to each other, you immediately notice the, the tightness and the sturdiness of the hinge in the Z Flip 6. My Flip 5 became a little bit floppy, whereas the Flip 6 straight out of the box isn't doing that. Before we get to the internals, there's something else about the design that you, you do notice immediately. And that's that Samsung have put these big color rings around the camera. And these colors match the colors on the back of the phone. So it kind of gives it a little bit of cohesion from front to back. The Flip 5 obviously doesn't have that. It's almost like they're hiding the cameras, that there's nothing really special about them, whereas there is here. And we'll get to the cameras in a moment. Diving internally into the phone is where we see a lot of upgrades. Not only is the, the new chipset, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, which has done amazing things for flagships for Samsung this year alone. So we're going to expect big things for it from the Flip 6 as well. But also Samsung have fit in a vapor chamber. Now I mentioned before about how this is a little bit thicker than the Flip 5 and it's like marginally when you have them next to each other. A lot of that's down to two things. The vapor chamber being included, which is 150% bigger than the vapor chamber from the S23 Ultra, which was a full-on flagship. Like if we look, oh, here is my S23 Ultra. Here. If we look at the two phones, it's incredible that they fit a vapor chamber bigger in here than what was in here. So kudos to Samsung, well done. The other thing that makes it slightly thicker is the bigger battery. Samsung have put a 4,000 milliamp hour battery here in the Z Flip 6, which is 300 milliamp hours bigger than the Flip 5. In our review, we'll dive deep into how long the battery lasted for us and our usage regarding the battery and the processor and the vapor chamber, sort of creating this sort of triangle of efficiency. So we'll see how that runs out and how that plays out. But on paper anyway, massive numbers, big upgrade. The other number that Samsung have improved is the RAM. There is now 12 gigabytes of RAM as a base on the Z Flip 6 versus eight from the Flip 5. You'd think with that, they'd bring in features like DeX, but DeX is nowhere to be seen, at least in an official capacity. Now I mentioned about the cameras. The camera rings being colored is Samsung telling you there's something new here. So let's dive deep into the cameras now and look at the difference in the hardware, the software, and then the output that you get. First things first. Finally, Samsung have increased the capability of the main camera. You now have a 50 megapixel main camera, which not only is bigger in resolution, but bigger in sensor size, meaning you're going to be able to get more flexible shots, not just the resolution, but also things like depth of field is going to be a little bit shallower. Just in this side-by-side -side comparison here, I took a couple of snapshots of the camera that I'm using to record this, and you'll see as I slowly sort of step back, the Flip 5 kind of lose that depth of field at a certain point, whereas the Flip 6 
maintains that sort of shallower depth of field and isolates the camera nicely. That's the difference between having a bigger sensor size on a phone is you can get that natural depth of field naturally. The other thing inside the software that you'll notice is that the ultra wide camera is showing a 0 0.6 versus 0 0.5. So Samsung have upgraded the hardware of the ultra wide, not by a lot, it's just going to be a 12 megapixel still, but it might have a slightly different field of view, but it should be a better ultra wide camera than the Flip 5s. That's really it on the hardware front, because when you dive into the software, that's when the new hardware kind of enables new things. Combination of the new 50 megapixel sensor and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy brings about some new camera modes. In the software, in the camera app, you'll immediately notice the 50 megapixel option is there. And that 50 megapixel option actually works on the cover screen too. So you can take cover screen selfies at 50 megapixel, which I thought was pretty neat. Can't do that on the Flip 5 for obvious reasons. Also on the cover screen, thanks to this new 50 megapixel camera, Samsung will put in something called auto zoom. So when you have the phone sort of propped up in a cover with the cover screen on like an 80 degree angle, you can actually have this software that turns on and will automatically zoom in and out to capture the best possible framing of your photo. You can see the difference here between the Flip 5 and the Flip 6. The Flip 6 will work to keep you in the frame in the best possible way, whereas the Flip 5 is fixed to where it is. When you're ready, you just kind of capture it using palm selfie or something along those lines and snap the shot. It's really good. It's really neat. You know when you go to say two words, but they're nice and neat? That's what I tried to do. Other camera modes inside the regular camera app, not with the cover selfie sitting on, is that Samsung have brought in a lot of the stuff we saw from S24. Things like the ability to take 2x portrait mode shots, which is great. Flip 5 can't do that because of the limitations of the hardware. Things like being able to do portrait video zoom, where you can go between one, two, and three times zoom in the portrait video mode, which I thought was really nice. It's not in 4K, but the Flip 5 can't do that either. And then you've got dual recording, which is Samsung's upgrade to director's view. And dual recording, I think is gonna be really cool, especially on a flip, because you can pop it into that flex mode and have it record from two cameras at the same time. That's absurdly good. You've also got Expert Raw, which is now gonna be on the Flip 6, and that, that sensor gets all of the upgrades to capability, like 24 megapixel mode, as well as the ND filter and all that sort of stuff here on the Flip 6. All right, let's dive into the camera comparison and see sort of what is better. All right, so I've just been out taking some photos with the Flip 5 and the Flip 6. I thought what better way to do the comparison and talk about it than actually use the Flip 6 camera to do so. Using pro video mode in 4K30 and recording just from the rear microphone, just so you can isolate my voice. I'm at football. And I just want to talk a little bit about what the differences are. First thing I noticed straight away across the photos that I took, whether that be with the ultra wide or the main camera, was that the lighter shadows on the Flip 6 were very noticeable. The dark shadows on the Flip 5 were what I remember about the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy and the foldables from Samsung from last year. The Flip 6 sort of lightens up those shadows a little bit and provides a little bit more detail, of course, because it has the new 50 megapixel main sensor. That 50 megapixel main sensor also allows for a two times crop with no loss of quality. And you can see the difference when you go 2X on the 50 megapixel Flip 6 versus 2X on the 12 megapixel Flip 5. It just retains that little bit of detail a little bit more. And what I also noticed too is when you actually punch in all the way to 10X, like a four and a 10, you get the better quality at that 10X as well. Photos of people, the next thing I want to try, both in normal mode and in portrait photos mode. In normal mode, I noticed straight away the difference in the skin tone on my son's face. He's an Italian kid, so he's got a natural olive skin glow. And the Flip 5 kind of washed him out a little bit, whereas the Flip 6 retained that. So that's good, the processing did that. And then in portrait photo mode, the same thing happened. Exactly the same thing. The Flip 6 also has the 2x portrait option now, and you can punch into that 2x, which gives you a more natural sort of portrait shot, so I like that. Video was very similar. Stabilization, I don't notice too much of a difference. I think the sensor is better on the Flip 6, obviously, so the stabilization will come out on top. But the same thing happened with the shadows. It was the lighter shadow areas that I noticed in the difference between the Flip 6 versus the Flip 5. But there's other video modes as well, like portrait video mode and other stuff which we'll jump into now. So this is 4K 30 video quality and also just testing the microphones on the Flip 5 versus Flip 6. The sound you listen to now is coming from the Flip 5 and obviously the video you can see. 
and this is the Flip 6. Now this is just 4K30 standard, no tricks, no settings. Just from out of the preview, and I'm using the cover screen as the preview, it looks to be that more depth of field, that more natural depth of field on the Flip 6 versus what there is on the Flip 5. And the color is a little bit more punchy and maybe not as shadowy. Like there's not the dark shadows up there. And this is portrait video. Now, the Flip can only do full HD in both Flip 6 and Flip 5. But again, take a look at the difference in the depth of field. The Flip 6 can do portrait video zoom, which I can't demonstrate when I'm holding two phones at the same time. Anyway, which one looks better? So quite a comprehensive sort of guide there. You can see the difference between the photos and then of course the videos as well. We'll definitely dive deeper into the camera a little bit later with the flip and sort of look at the key features and how to use it properly in our Subtle Mail Labor video. So make sure you subscribe to Sam Mobile TV. Look out for that. Now we're going to dive into the software. The software is a huge part of the Z Flip 6 because this is where the phone kind of differentiates itself from any other phone on the market. Samsung with every fold and flip launch upgrade 0.1 to the software that they've got. So the Flip 6 will be One UI 6.1.1. Flip 5 is just One UI 6.1 for now. That will get upgraded to 6.1.1 in the coming weeks. All the stuff that's in the software on the Flip 6 will come to the Flip 5. All the stuff that doesn't require hardware. So all the Galaxy AI stuff, the new stuff like Sketch to Image and Portrait Studio, that'll all come to here. Things like the new widgets on the Flip 6. You now have the ability to create like widget cards and put multiple widgets inside one of these cards and then launch it straight from that widget, which is super convenient. And you can basically pick from normal widgets and stack them in there. I love the idea of it. Other things too, like the new AOD for the lock screen on the cover screen. With the S24 series, Samsung put lock screen AOD where it will remove the background and your lock screen becomes your wallpaper. They've kind of done that here a little bit. It's like a mini version. In the settings, you can go into the settings of lock screen and always on display and make it, when it's, especially when it's tap to show, in fact, only when it's tap to show, you can tap to show the lock screen for five seconds on the cover screen. Outside of that, if you just want regular always on display, you could turn that on. But for tap to show, you have that extra option which isn't on the Flip 5. So look, there's no real need to stress over the new stuff if you've got a Flip 5 with software-wise because you'll get them on the Flip 5 eventually. It's just for now, they're on the Flip 6. You can go check out our One UI 6.1.1 video about the Galaxy AI features up here and uh, stay tuned for the review because that's coming. So let us know if you think it's worth the upgrade. There's a lot of good numbers in here that I think makes it for a really nice upgrade from Flip 5 to Flip 6. But you let me know in the comments. Hit subscribe to Sam Mobile TV. My name's Daniel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.